Oh, thank you. So my name is Johan Sandin, and I'm a CSO at Altico and Pharma, and I will present Altico's disease-modifying therapy, Alstatin here. We'll start actually by looking at a section through uh, the brain. On the right-hand side, you can see an Alzheimer's disease brain. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see healthy brain. And what is quite apparent is the massive volume loss in the diseased brain, which is the result of massive neuronal loss in this area. Another key hallmark of Alzheimer's disease is the um, appearance of so-called amyloid plaques that are composed of uh, the amyloid A-beta peptide. This was a key hallmark that Allery Alzheimer saw already in 1906, as we heard, and, and uh, certainly is a key characteristic for Alzheimer's disease patients. Now, if we look at A-beta amyloid, as we heard, uh, this is a really early finding in the disease, as can be seen here on the graph to the left, and shown in red is the uh, accumulation of A-beta uh, amyloid in the brain. And this starts some 15 to 20 years before symptom onset. And uh, it's, it's obviously something you would want to affect very early on to avoid uh, secondary and tertiary effects. Now, uh, what is then, uh, how is this, this amyloid then formed? So this animation will show you this. So in the um, cell membrane, there is a protein called APP inserted. And uh, this protein is cleaved by uh, two enzymes sequentially. First, by the beta secretase here shown in pink, and then by the gamma secretase here shown in green. The net result is the release of a small peptide called beta amyloid, which is quite sticky and, and over time and in, with increasing concentration starts accumulating into larger and larger aggregates, oligomers, fibrils, and eventually these large amyloid plaques that are so characteristic for the disease. Now, these amyloid aggregates are toxic to nerve cells in the brain so that they become dysfunctional and eventually die off. So what alstatin does, it's binding to the gamma secretase and changes how the gamma secretase cleaves the A-beta peptide so that shorter uh, fragments are released, which are not toxic and do not aggregate. Now, if we look at this um, animation again, um, but as a, as a picture, you can see here the cleavage of APP, as we saw in the animation, first by beta secretase and then gamma secretase, releasing the toxic A-beta-42, which is the building block of these amyloid plaques. Now, as we heard from Bengt, um, initially, uh, the industry tried to completely block the gamma secretase enzyme. Um, however, gamma secretase also cleaves other proteins, which are important for normal cell function. Therefore, uh, this approach was not feasible in the clinic. The industry then went over to try to block beta secretase. Again, since beta secretase had also other proteins that were important, blocking enzyme activity completely was not a feasible way forward. The solution was to rather try to modulate specifically the cleavage of A-beta. And this is the gamma, these are the gamma secretase modulators. So here, these compounds do not block enzyme activity, but rather specifically changes how the gamma secretase cleaves, um, the, uh, cleaves out the A-beta peptides so that the shorter fragments are formed instead of these longer toxic forms. So this is important from a safety perspective. Now here, uh, this slide shows you the classical so-called amyloid cascade, 
uh, which generates these toxic and, and damaging uh, amyloid aggregates. And uh, as you can see, the A beta is cleaved out, forming uh, single monomers, which then aggregate into oligomers, fibrils, and eventually these large plaques. Now, if we look at the uh, A beta antibodies that we heard Beng talk about earlier on, the, these antibodies bind and clear aggregated A beta peptides, late stage uh, um, aggregates such as fibrils, protofibrils, and plaques. Alstatin, on the other hand, which is a gamma secretase a, a modulator, uh, reduces the production of the initial building blocks, the A beta. Uh, 42, and thereby um, prevents the formation of all of these uh, A-beta aggregates. Moreover, uh, it also increases the amount of these shorter peptides, A-beta 37 and 38, that have been shown to display protective properties. And this has been shown by multiple groups, showing that these shorter fragments can actually inhibit the aggregation of the toxic A beta of 1 to 42. Also, that these shorter fragments seems to correlate with a lower risk of developing the disease. Moreover, that they also can be used as biomarkers for, for Alzheimer's disease dementia. Now, if we look at Alstatin, uh, for example, ACD680 as shown here, um, we see a potent reduction of toxic A beta 1 to 42 in cells. Uh, so with increasing concentrations of the compound, we can see a decrease in A beta 40 and 42, these toxic species as shown here in blue and black. At the same time, we see an increase in the shorter protective peptides, A beta 37 and 38. The net result, however, is we don't affect the total amount of A beta peptides, but we just change the ratio of the toxic versus the protective species. And this is also an advantage because if A beta does have a physiological role, we are not affecting the total amount of A beta, we just decrease the toxic forms and increase the more protective species. So in fact, we are doing just the opposite to what most familiar or inherited forms of Alzheimer's disease do. Now, if we look at the effects of Alstatin, such as ACD680 in vivo, this uh, figure here shows the effects uh, in animals where we can see that a single dose of Alstatin decreases the amount of uh, toxic brain A beta 1 to 42 by more than 60%. So it's a potent reduction. As we talked about before as well, we don't want our um, Alstatin compounds to affect the cleavage of other important proteins. And the slide, the picture here to the right shows uh, four different groups, which represent other proteins that are cleaved by gamma secretase, such as notch. Now, as you can see here in green, that's a gamma secretase inhibitor, so blocking the enzyme activity completely. That also blocks the cleavage of these other proteins. While a gamma secretase modulator, uh, Alstatin, shown here in blue, does not affect the cleavage of these um, proteins. So it's specific for a which is, again, really important from a safety perspective. So now, how is Alstatin then expected to differ from the antibodies that are coming to the market? Well, first of all, as we heard, uh, this is a small molecule therapy, uh, which generally passes much more readily across the blood-brain barrier to reach its target site, the brain. And we've seen this, uh, for example, with Neurostore, um, where uh, more than 37% of the unbound uh, um, compound actually pass across the blood-brain barrier, to be compared with about 0.1 to 0.2% for the antibodies. It also provides a more cost-effective treatment for chronic use than biologics, given much lower production costs. 
it's also highly suitable for early treatment uh, before the brain becomes heavily damaged and the patient develops cognitive symptoms. Uh, it's also suitable for home treatment, given that it can be taken as a tablet or capsule. So you don't need to go to the hospital to get infusions of the drug, which also decreases for society. Moreover, we're not expected to have the side effects that are characteristic of the antibodies, such as brain edema and brain microbleedings, so-called ARIA. Again, decreasing costs uh, because we don't need to do regular brain scans and hospital visits uh, to follow up on these uh, so-called ARIA effects. We also see uh, an uh, attractive profile uh, when it comes to the clinical trials because we could um, we can do a clinical proof of mechanism and sample target engagement already in phase one clinical trials in healthy volunteers. Here we could evaluate both safety and tolerability but also to explore biomarker effects where we would be able to show central target engagement. We could look at both A beta 42 and 40, so a reduction of these toxic A-beta peptides, while in parallel also um, assessing the levels of the shorter fragments, A-beta 37 and 38, are protected, and thereby establishing that we have reached the target and, and um, activated the target. We can do these measurements both in CSF and plasma, as there are biomarker kits available as well. Now, if we look at the, the target patient populations, we see two major groups. One, which is a, a preventive therapy, uh, where the patients would be identified based on genetic risk factors and biomarkers. And this would be a standalone treatment before onset of symptoms and before any, uh, before the kind of ma any major neurodegeneration occurs. And there, the target would be to prevent the buildup of amyloid. And here, um, we could also look at uh, patient groups which have inherited forms of the disease that includes Down syndrome, which is suitable for proof of concept clinical studies. There is also um, another opportunity, which is with regard to a combination or maintenance treatment uh, in patients with established Alzheimer's disease after uh, initial plaque clearance provided by uh, antibody treatments such as lecanemab and donanemab, for example. Now, if we look at the competitive landscape, there are less than a handful of, of uh, competitors. Um, we know that uh, Roche has a compound in phase one, and there's also another compound from University of California, San Diego, uh, which is also currently in phase one. Um, with our compounds being in preclinical development, we've, we think that we are quite in line with the competition. Uh, of interest as well to note is that uh, Pfizer have published um, data with their, an earlier compound um, showing that gamma secretase modulators can indeed display both potent efficacy and good safety in that. So to summarize the what we see are the advantages with Alstatin. We can reduce the uh, toxic uh, amylogenic A-beta-42 production in the brain. While doing so, we also increase these shorter peptides, A-beta-37 and 38, which have been suggested to have protective properties. The net result is we don't affect the total amount of A-beta. So if A-beta does have a physiological role, we're not affecting that. It, the mode of action is actually the reverse of most familiar Alzheimer mutations. And um, our compounds in Alstatin, such as ACD680, um, as I showed you, have, can potently reduce A beta 42 production in vivo more than 60%. And we can achieve a proof of mechanism data already in phase one clinical trials. And we see potential for both preventive and maintenance treatment. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, and thank you, thank the team here at Alzheimer's Pharma, uh, our collaborators at Karolinska, Bengt Wienblad, uh, Lars Schanberg, 
and also at uh, Gothenburg University, uh, Professor Henrik Zetterberg, uh, Lotta Agholm, and Stephanie Freeworth. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention.